One year ago, I set out on a bit of a challenge. I wanted to see how hard it would be to beat all of Bloodborne without using a single weapon. No swords, no guns, no molotovs, anything like that. I wanted to beat Bloodborne using only my fists. Playing Bloodborne without a weapon is a difficult task. You only deal a fraction of your usual damage, and you can't use guns for parries. One thing that remains, however, is the backstab. It knocks down enemies and leaves them open for visceral attacks. That's a powerful move that deals massive damage, regardless of your weapon. With this in mind, I made my character and got to work. This first boss really sets a standard for this whole challenge. A giant tanky beast, letting me know I was in for the long run. And as any good first boss, it's here to teach you the basics. You dodge his moves and hit him when an opportunity arises. You can safely dial that up to 11 when you don't have a weapon. It might not be hard to dodge, but I have to hold it together for the entire 20 minutes that I fought him. Even the tiniest mistake could add up over that time and make me run out of healing before the end. And after many hours of trying, and over multiple days, I did it. Feather Gascoigne is a whole other beast. He's fast and agile with multiple faces and a smaller window for action. The trick is knowing which moves leaves an opening, and after a couple of tries, I was pretty confident in the early stages. But in his last phase, he succumbs to the madness and transforms into a beast. Faster and more predictable than ever before. Up until that point, I had mostly relied on the charged heavy attacks, but after realizing that that was not longer a safe option, I resorted to the weaker, but much quicker, light attack. It would take a lot longer to bring him down, but it would keep me from being defenseless for too long. And during one of my attempts, with only three blood vials remaining, I was almost ready to give up when this happened. Oh my god! Oh my god! Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! A very narrow backstab knocked him to his knees, leaving me full access to his behind and it easily knocked off the rest of his HP. I have to be honest and say I was dreading this fight. I have a bit of a history with the Bloodstarved Beast, as it was my biggest wall the first time I played Bloodborne. Safe to say, I was relieved to find out it's one of the easiest bosses in the Fists only roster. For some reason, there's no cooldown on how often you can backstab the Bloodstar Beast. That means that I basically never had to rely on my usual low damage attacks, and could instead focus on the consistent high damage of the Visceral attack. A bit shocked by how easy it was, I slayed the beast and moved on. From one softball to the next, this is by far the easiest boss in the game, and went down without a hitch. Just backstab, visceral, rinse and repeat until you've killed them both. I managed to delete the VOD from when I beat them, so I've added clips of me beating the witches on my victory lap stream, which I did after I beat the entire challenge.
Next on the list is the infamous Vicar Amelia, and I was not ready. She has long range attacks that come out of nowhere and a large leap, and a slam with a shockwave that deals an insane amount of damage. On top of this, she can heal mid fight. This was a huge struggle for me, and it's partly my own fault. There is an item in the game that stops enemies from healing for a period of time, and I decided not to use that, and this obviously made the fight a lot harder. Luckily, there were moments where I could get visceral attacks off, so I could chunk her down a bit, and by being aggressive, she wouldn't heal as frequently. This made it so that, in the end, I was barely able to pull it off, with very little healing remaining. <laughs> oh my god! This fight is quite simple, but it's far from easy. It's a giant beast like Vicromelia, this one's got lightning. It's not as hard, and it doesn't have healing, but finding opening for this fight was really difficult. And the bane of my existence was the lightning shockwave. He would charge up and explode with lightning in a large area, dealing an insane amount of damage. For the longest time, I would just pray and run away from the blast, trying not to get hit. But when that didn't work, I decided I would have to learn the dodge tactic. It was tight, but it would work, and that would give me a large opening for my charged heavy attacks. In my final attempt, I managed to dodge every single one. Hello, Shy. You just came... You came in just in time. Next boss in the lineup are the Shadows of Yarnum, and man, these guys are the worst. First of all, there are three, I mean, come on! And after just one of them reaches the halfway point, they all get snake arms, with long ass attacks that can go through walls and two of them running quickly after you, making it incredibly difficult to find openings. I tried so many strategies and rage quit multiple times. Not long after one of those rage quits is when it happened. Is that gonna kill? Almost. They just went from a very bad to a very good at them very quickly! <laughs> very quick indeed. Two very sketchy backstabs just killed two of the three shadows almost instantly. That only left one. In addition to the other moves, you can now spawn giant snakes from the ground but I luckily managed to tough it out to the end. I have no idea how long it would have taken had I not gotten the backstabs right there. And TNT, my boy! <laughs> oh. Having finally gotten past the shadows of Yarnum, it was time to move on and fight the Brahmin, the vacuous spider. And if fighting three enemies wasn't enough, now you have to kill like 30 spiders. This fight really isn't that big of a deal, and I got past it pretty quickly. Not risk it for the biscuits, we take it slower. And when I'm being easy.
All right, let's take a look at the next boss. Ah, finally, just one giant disgusting piece of dismantled body parts, just the way God intended. No henchmen, no snake arms, no minia. I didn't want to fight the one reborn for the life of me. It was too much at that time, so I decided to take a vacation to Canehurst to get some fresh air and look at the wildlife. And after having a guided tour, I had a date with the king. Man, this fight was fun. Quick and agile attacks, magic moves that are difficult but satisfying to dodge, and a chance to smack him in the behind for a backstab. The only real issue was a long walk back every time I was impaled by his sight. In the end, it was a very satisfying kill when I finally hit him for the last time, with only a fraction of my health remaining. Go to bed. You're out of here. <laughs> You're out of here. God damn, I was lucky that last one, but it worked. After putting it off last time, I had no other option but to force my way through the One Reborn. And I was always in a bad mood when I had to fight this guy. Having to walk the long way back each time and also having to kill the six bell ringers without taking a lot of damage. Then I would have to smack this big boy one hit at a time and watch out for falling corpses and other magic attacks. The fight itself took a while and I had to fight it many times over multiple days before I finally beat him. I don't wanna die, I don't wanna die. Oh, I did it! <laughs> I almost died at the end too! <laughs> oh, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead. After the last fight, I finally felt like I was on the home stretch. I was well over the halfway point in terms of bosses, and I knew there were a couple of softballs in there. First one being Amygdala. The giant creature may look intimidating, with large moves, lasers, and his head being the only part that takes substantial damage. The reality, however, is quite different. It's a slow fight, but as long as you wait for the openings, it goes down without much effort. Oh shit, 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 I don't want to die now. What do you mean the fight is not over? Okay, the fight is over. <laughs> Never mind. It's gonna make a joke, but then I just ended the boss fight. The next softball is Mikolash, another required boss that is more of a gimmick than anything else. He runs around, beckons you to run after him, until you finally trap him in a room. You backstab, visceral, until he runs out again. Just do this one more time and you kill him. Also, you wanna dance on one right? <laughs> yes. Okay, do the tentacle move? Yes! GG. Before running down the last couple of bosses, I had to explore the last optional path. And it was on this path that I met with the Mushroom Squad, and I had to take down their leader. It's another gimmick fight where you have to spot the boss among a squad of identical minions. Once he transforms, however, he starts running after you, and I ended up running around to separate him from his minions to get in a hit or two. 
It was a pretty easy but slow and obnoxious fight. To this, I had no idea how difficult it could be. I consider Ebrietta's to be on the easier side when playing normally, but you never know when playing fists only. She's a godlike creature with large tentacles that deals an insane amount of damage. She is really fast and takes very little damage unless you go for the head. She also has a charge attack that is so large that most of the time I would just have to tank it and hope she didn't do it too often. When she reaches 50% HP, she transforms, gets faster, deals more damage has more moves that are difficult to dodge, and she's even got a damaging aura around her. It deals damage to you, as long as you are in close proximity to her. This boss really felt impossible, and it took over 11 hours to take her down. The biggest contributor was that I baited out the undodgeable charge move, and waited to get the visceral until when she was just about to transform. After all the trouble I was under fighting Embriettas, I was ready to breeze past the last few bosses, and Murgo's wet nurse did not disappoint. She may look intimidating with her six arms, each wielding a long sharp blade, but she's easily one of the most telegraphed bosses in the game. All her moves has a very distinct animation buildup, and once you learn the timing, it gives you plenty of free hits. Overall, it's a pretty easy boss. GG. GG. can be the last boss of the game if he really wanted to be. But I had no intentions of letting German get his way. I kindly asked him to stand up for himself, and so he did, wielding some of the fastest moves in the game. It looked impossible at the start. Many of his moves are too fast and accurate to dodge and also get a hit in, so I could not brute force him down. But after countless failures and many many deaths, I finally learned what moves could and could not be punished putting him down slowly and waiting for the perfect opportunity to visceral him. And that was when he reached phase 2. I was not happy to learn how aggressive phase 2 would be. He's faster, stronger and has less openings. And he also has a gun now. And having to slowly work my way through the first phase every time, it's safe to say that it took me quite a while to learn when I could attack and when I had to stay away. But when I finally learned it, he has a third phase! Uh, this one just switches between the two first ones, letting me get more visceral attacks in every time he was using the scythe. A bit anticlimactic, but I'll take it. You fucking did it! Yes! <laughs> This boss has a lot of problematic aspects to it. Normally I would say this boss is pretty easy, but in fists only that's not the case. 
It has a small window for attacks, very fast and large AoE moves that can be a real pain to deal with. I was fighting worse and worse during the stream. It was getting late and I had to get up early for work the next day, but I decided to do one more attempt before ending the session. This might be it, but it's gonna be close. The attempt was much better than any I'd had during the last hour. It was all or nothing. Luckily, I had a final ace, the Yosefka's Blood Bomb, an extra healing class that I'd not used yet. I decided it was now or never. I downed it and dove in, tanking the final hit and running for a charged heavy attack. Did I just... Did I just... <laughs> And that's it. I beat Bloodborne using only my fists. This has been an incredible journey, from the very beginning where I wasn't sure if this was even going to be possible, to the late greedy hours grinding away at the final couple of bosses. Every moment was worth it. I feel very accomplished to stand here after defeating every single boss. Fists only. Yo! Hey, what's up? Did you just say all the bosses? Yeah, you know, main bosses and the optional ones defeated. But, um, what about the DLC? Well, that's a separate thing, I think. And I don't mm. want to. Scared? <laughs>